we will have a live demo on aspects we studied for Google Webmaster or Google Search Console. I first type in Google Add URL. I click on the link. I'm logged in. I submit my homepage URL. I click on I'm not a robot and I submit request. Then I go to Google Webmasters. Google.com slash webmasters. This is my dashboard. When I log in, actually, this is how it looks. You want to add a new property? You click on add a property. You type in your homepage URL and you click on continue. Once you click on continue, you need to have it verified. Now all these are verified. We will see as to how you verify a property. You click on verify this property. First recommended method is Google Analytics. We said that you need to use the same Google account for all Google features. AdWords, Webmasters, Analytics, Google My Business, and Google Tag Manager. Why? Because it helps you configure accounts with each other. It helps you verify those accounts. And most importantly, one particular account, you don't need to remember multiple passwords and logging threads. So if I have a Google Analytics account, where I am the admin and owner of that particular site, I can click on verify and it will get verified. In this case, it's saying that my verification using Google Analytics failed because I do not have the admin accounts. So I try say alternate methods. HTML file download. I need to download this HTML file. This is the file extension. I need to upload it to the root. This is how it will look. And then I click on verify. Then I move to HTML tags. I need to include this particular meta tag to my site's home page. As I said before, the home page is the most important page in your website. Any other files or verifications that you need to make should be done through the home page. Even if you're submitting your website, it is the home page that you submit to Google. This is the example as to how we implement the meta tag. This goes in between the head before the body, the first body, yeah? and then I click on verify. Then I have domain name provider. Say I have crazydomains.com as my domain name provider. This is the example that you need to, what you call points that you need to follow. Usually verification is done through tag manager or analytics, the most convincing and easiest way. So tag manager is the same thing, like you have an analytics account, you create a Google tag manager account and you click on verify and it's done. Once it's verified, let's look as to how the dashboard looks. This is what I get. Crawlerus tells me, you know, the pages that Google had identified before when I did add my URL to Google that Google cannot identify now. It could be that those pages are taking time to download. The links could have been broken or that particular page doesn't exist anymore. Search analytics tells me the total number of clicks that I've generated from Google to my website. 
sitemaps, the number of sitemaps that I've submitted to Google, the number of URLs that had been submitted to Google, and out of the URLs submitted, what are the number of URLs that Google could index and identify? I go to search appearance. Structured data. We spoke about rich snippets in the last time. We also said that rich snippets needs to be implemented across your organization logo for the branding aspect. Contact details. Products, if you're offering products. Breadcrumbs. If you have any particular event or show that is coming up and you can book tickets for recipes and to social profiles. Rich snippets are also implemented across an internal site search function. That is if your website has one. So if I go to a website called Flipkart. This site has an internal site search function. If I implement a rich snippet backend, what will happen is when I type in Google for Flipkart, this internal customized internal site search function within the Google search results page comes up. I can search directly for mobiles. And everything related to mobile comes up here from Flipkart. So we need to see which are the products we can. Since ET cases is my site here. We need to see where all we can highlight using data highlighter. If you're not implementing rich snippets, this particular tool helps you highlight your products and promote it through Google. Say I'm highlighting a particular product. Marketing research is the category. This is a product that I want to highlight. I put in the URL. Products is what I'm trying to highlight. This is the only page I want to tag. This is the name of the product. This is the price. I have no particular image or reviews and ratings here. I click on publish. It's published. It has been modified, but there are no errors here. If Google finds out any errors, when the site will be recrawled, it will show up here. HTML improvement tells you which are the pages in your website that has a missing meta tag, whether it's a meta description that is missing, whether there's a title tags there that are missing, whether there are duplicate title tags, where are long title tags as in if it is exceeding 60 to 65 characters, if they are non-informative title tags, if it is not conveying any particular keyword, if they are short title tags, if it's too small. So all of that data is accessed here. Next we move to site links. So what are site links? Say I type in a brand name. The links that you see here is faculty, free products, case studies, I am Cozy Code, and about us. These are called site links. How do site links appear? 
site links appears by Google itself. Google understands the pages that have been most engaging in your website and accordingly promotes the site links. Now, say I do not want faculty free products to appear in the site links. I submit that link here and I click on demote and that link appears here. This after 24 to 48 hours will automatically be removed and another the page will replace it. Then we go to accelerated mobile pages. It's a new feature. You need to have a particular CMS that supports accelerated mobile pages. How does accelerated mobile pages help? If you are on a mobile device and even if the connection is slow, even if you're having any kind of device compatibility, this page is built on a CMS will allow it to load faster in Google. Next, we move to search traffic. So we've discussed search analytics. What are the keywords that generated traffic to my site? The position that is present in Google for this particular keyword. Number of times they have appeared in this particular position for this particular keyword. Impressions is the number of time your website is appearing in Google for a particular keyword. Irrespective of the position, this could be four and the average could come out to be four plus two divided by two. That's three. But the number of times it is appearing for this particular keyword is impressions. Clicks is the number of time users have clicked on this particular result on my website when searching for this particular keyword. CTR click through rate clicks divided by impressions into 100. I could have landing pages, which are the landing pages that appeared in Google. Home page appeared 418. It generated 149 clicks. Average position for my home page is 8. For a whole lot of keywords, it could be case studies, case studies online, brand and non brand. Brand is case studies, brand is sorry, ET cases, economic times case studies, non brand is case studies online, buy case studies online, only case studies. Geography that have generated traffic to my website. Devices. It could be web results. It could be image. It could be video. Dates. I can select a date range. Then I move to links to your site. Which are the sites that have maximum links to my websites? There are 49 domains that have links to ET cases. So, even if I have 100 19 links coming from academia.edu, Google will consider this to be one. Even if I have 38 links coming from cobaltcouncil.com, Google will consider this to be one. Total number of external domains that have links to pages in my website is the total number of backlinks that I have generated. Then let's go to internal links which are the pages in my website that have a link internal link to pages in my website so if i go to etcases.com from about us i see links home page by default is left out from case categories These are all links. So what are the internal links that are coming in? Then let's move to mobile usability.
minimum error since it's a responsive website. So if you have any other pages that are not responsive or not coming up in mobile, all of them will come here. Then let's go to crawl. Crawl errors. Which are the URLs Google couldn't identify in my website or had problem indexing? Whether it was from a desktop, whether it was from smartphone, whether it was from feature phone. Feature phone, hardly anybody uses BlackBerry these days. From smartphone is Android, Windows. Desktop is your desktop and laptop. What are the pages that are crawled on a daily basis? Time taken to download a page in a particular browser. Kilobytes or pages content downloaded on a daily basis. Fetch as Google. Any other say if I want to have this particular URL indexed manually. I copy it. I paste this URL here. I want it for desktop. I do fetch. I click on submit to index. I verify that I'm not robot, I'm spam. I only want this particular URL to be indexed. I click on go. URL has been submitted to index. Robots.txt tester. I have a particular robots file implemented here. The same thing comes up here. There are zero errors, there are no warnings. It's perfect. Sitemaps. I have a sitemap implemented. Last time it was indexed. URLs that was submitted, URLs that was indexed. If I want to resubmit, I can have this resubmitted. If I want to add a new sitemap, I can implement it here and I can have it tested. URL parameters, if I want to you know, put some parameter like SRC is equal to HP where the, uh, to identify various sources, only then or else it's not required. So that's it from Google Search Console or Google Web Masters. When you're actually finding out page rank, what you do is you type in Google page rank checker. Say I type in make my trip. This comes when you do not have Google Webmasters data so that you say if you are searching for forums or directories to promote your links and you need to know what is the page rank of a particular site. You need to know what are the total number of backlinks that they have. I verify this. This is my Google page rank. I have 7,507 ex referring domains. As in, these are the, my total backlinks that are coming in. Out of which, educational sites are providing me 904. Government sites are providing me 57. Page rank quality, very strong. Anything above five is very strong. Domain age is the number of, amount of time you have been in present in the internet. So you have some major directories. Um, the site is not listed in Google, Demos or Yahoo. This is how you check page rank. Two things that we need to always keep in mind when we do search engine optimization is to follow two criteria set by Google. For on-page, it's called Google 
Pada It was a change that was invented in 2011. It was aimed to lower the rank of low quality sites or thin sites as in any site that had poor usability factor, any site that had poor design, anything that was not user friendly or not relevant or wasn't you know contributing or adding value to your user search query. That particular website would feature lower in Google ranks. The change aimed to lower the rank of low quality sites and returned high quality sites at the top of the search results. Google Panda is a filter that prevents low quality sites from ranking well in search engine result pages. So Google quality they identify if the site is engaging or not, if there is a relevant content what is the customer journey that a user might have when landing on the site? What is the objective of the site? How long is it taking for the time to download? Everything taken in and then provided is called Google Panda. If your website is good, if your website is search user friendly, it becomes automatically search friendly. If it has relevant content and you know the marketing objective of your site that is map out the journey for a customer very cleanly so that your marketing objective is fulfilled there are hundred percent chances of you ranking high in google next is google penguin so google panda refers to when you're building your site you will have to follow google panda guidelines google penguin If you violate webmaster guidelines, if you are manipulating your website by number of links pointing to a particular page, if you are, you know, over promoting your links, if you're overdoing content promotions, earned, not paid, you can do a lot of content promotions through Google Display Network, through Facebook marketing, Twitter ads, that is separate. Google will not consider that. But if you're overdoing, you know, you say, directory submissions you're buying too much amount of links from directories uh, you're overdoing your image submissions or your uh, social bookmarking submissions article submissions if you're trying to generate too much links in a shorter period of time then the google panda effect will ensure that your website is down in search engine results so this is for content marketing panda is for website development and penguin is for content marketing